Welcome to Tobin Tonight. We're glad to have you on. We got some tough questions lined up for a guy who usually asks the questions. So, uh, are you nervous? No, should I be? <laughs> no, no. Don't be. We got plenty to discuss, uh, so let's hop right into it. Now, the first thing that I thought was very interesting were you were born in Trinidad, but raised in Sackville, New Brunswick. Uh, explain how that came to be. So my parents are each from Trinidad, and they went to Mount Allison University in Sackville on scholarships. They didn't know each other till they arrived on campus in the 1950s, a couple of international students, and they ended up getting married in Sackville and then moved back to Trinidad to start their careers as teachers. And I was born, and when I was 11 months old, they decided that they wanted to uh, raise me in Canada as opposed to Trinidad, and so they went back to Sackville and started their launched their teaching careers in Canada, and uh, I lived in Sackville from the time I was 11 months old until I graduated from Mount A uh, when I was uh, 22. And speaking of Mount A, uh, Mount Allison University, you hold a honors BA in political science and sociology from there. You are also their valedictorian. And of course, another thing to your credit, you have a national university debating and public speaking championships. So it's easy to see how you come across calm and cool and collected on TV, but my question is, was journalism your career path? Was it always your passion? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I was growing up a long time ago, there weren't a lot of entertainment options uh, during the day. And, and I remember one of the nice things about uh, being in Sackville is that uh, when it got dark, you could hear these radio stations from New York and Boston. And I used to listen to those when I was, you know, 11, 12, 13 years old and was absolutely enthralled by them. I, I Even as I'm talking to you now, I can remember what it was like at the dead of winter at quarter to five in the afternoon. And it's dark. And so you can pick up these AM stations and listening to the announcer at WCBS and imagining him in the studio live as I was listening to him and, and just the magic of that, the magic of radio, how exciting broadcasting was, how they responded to big stories. That's what I wanted to do. And I, and I talked to friends of mine about that. And I remember when I said to them, this, this is the business I want to get in, they were almost embarrassed for me because, you know, how, how, do, how do any of us get into that business? But when I was in grade 10, I went to a, a high school debating tournament, and uh, there was a guy who was in grade 11 from St. John, New Brunswick, and, and he he won the provincials. Uh, you know, actually, I guess he placed second. I placed third. And when they were announcing that, that he had placed second, they uh, they said that he had worked at a uh, at a radio station in St. John, CFBC, as a, as a 16-year-old. And, uh, you know, anyone listening to this podcast who's from the Maritimes, when I mention this guy's name, they'll, they'll know who he was. But just imagine that I... I met him back then when we were both in high school, but his name's Steve Murphy, and uh, he ended up becoming the anchor at CTV in Halifax, has been there for a long time, is a terrifically talented broadcaster, but finding out when I was when I met him that he actually was able to work in radio and have a career in radio kind of made me feel a little bit more confident about that possibility. Just as I was graduating from high school, I got a summer job at a radio station in the next town uh, in Amherst, just a few kilometers away from Sackville. And that was it. Like Once I had that first job, it kind of opened the door to lots of other broadcasting jobs after that. That's interesting. I actually, yeah, I've actually know Steve Murphy. Uh, I've sent him a few demos myself, but uh, it, it's kind of funny to see that, that that, you know, the transition that you're both doing well in your fields, but at one point you guys were placing second and third in public speaking competitions. Absolutely. How important is it actually when we're talking about public speaking, when you look back that uh, you have the ability to master public speaking? Because, you know, when I'm watching you on the news, it doesn't matter who you're interviewing. Like, it seems like no sweat comes off of you. It just seems like you ask the questions, you're very calm and collected, but... Is public speaking like very essential to that? I would say, well, sir, I certainly haven't mastered it. There's still a lot to, to learn in, in that role. But I would say that, you know, especially the debating part of it, especially the way that we used to do it and in high school and universities in Canada, where most of it was what they called extemporaneous. So you'd get a topic and then you'd have five or ten minutes to, to get ready. And then you would have to either debate it as the, the government kind of proposing, you know, being in favor of it or the opposition being on the other side. It, you would be in a small room at a tournament and you would have two or three people judging you. You would have the people on the other side who are obviously trying to beat you in that debate. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good environment for learning that you can always find a way to 
fill the time, you know, to, to make a point to try to win an argument or refute an argument. And, and I do think that the many, many years that I did that and the occasional scary moments where you're, you're there, I'm just imagining now looking at people in that room and trying to think, oh, okay, where am I going to go to next? Or, you know, or you make a joke and nobody laughs and how are you going to pick yourself up after that? I think that kind of experience, when you go through that time and time again, the idea of being live on the air with the red light on seems n- no more daunting than than any of those experiences in debating. You mentioned this, that you began your broadcasting career at Seek ADH in Armhurst, and you also worked at a radio station in Moncton. Tell me a little bit more about how these opportunities came about. Well, the CKDH one, the town that I grew up in, was small enough that it, that every year the, they, they did a, a story in the local paper on people who were graduating from high school. And the guy who would do that story also was a freelancer for the radio station. And so I, I had a plan. And the plan was if, if he interviewed me for that newspaper article, I was going to plant the idea in his mind that uh, maybe I should, you know, be considered for a job at the radio station. Well, that's exactly how it worked out. He, he interviewed me as one of the graduates at Tantramar that year, and I said to him, you know, he said, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I, this is exactly what I was expecting, and I said, oh, I'd really love to work in radio sometime. And just as planned, he mentioned my name to Jeff DeGans, the guy at the local radio station in Amherst, and went over, did an audition. At the time, they used to hire two summer students every year, and that year, I was one of the people that they hired. And I remember walking into that newsroom in the radio station in Amherst in in June of 1979, and just being so thrilled to be there, and reading Billboard magazine, and watching the wire machine at that point. Obviously, you know, a time before computers, but we used to have this machine that would just constantly be be typing away in the newsroom, and and spools of yellow uh, newsprint would come off of this machine filled with the news copy, and and I really felt like I'm part of the business that includes that station in New York City or a station in Toronto, and so I did that for that first summer, and and part time during the school year. One, I went back to Mount A, and or began at Mount A, I guess. And then in the second summer, a guy was driving through town and heard me on the radio, and he was at CKCW in Moncton, which is probably about 45 minutes away from Sackville, a city of about 100,000 people. So, you know, the big time if you're in Sackville. And uh, he liked what he heard and gave me a call and asked me if I was interested in working at the radio station there, and I couldn't say yes fast enough. And and, and really, every job I've had since then, uh, I can directly trace back to those first two jobs in, in Moncton and Sackville. In Amherst. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1986, you joined the CBC, and in a few short years, you were covering major stories like the San Francisco earthquake, the LA riots, Vancouver riots, both ones in the uh, Stanley Cup finals, and so much more. How did you end up at CBC, and do you remember your first on-screen report? Yeah, that's a really good question about the first report. I, 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 I don't remember. I should actually look at the computer and see what that very first one was. I, when I went to Halifax, I, I graduated from Mount A, and I decided to, to go to law school, not to be a lawyer, but to, to have that background as a reporter. So I, I applied to Dow and, and started law school in the fall of, of 1983. And at that point, I'd worked a few years in, in radio at uh, the two stations we talked about, CKDH and CKDH. KCW in Amherst and Moncton, respectively. And then also I spent uh, three or two summers, I guess, working at CBC Radio in Moncton. And so I had quite a bit of experience in radio, and I thought, oh, I'll get to Halifax. I'll have no problem picking up a part-time job. Sent out tapes and resumes, and uh, I think one station actually acknowledged that they even got the tape. Everyone else didn't even didn't even send anything back. So I thought, well, that was kind of a sobering reminder of how tough it is in, in the business. And so I thought, you know, I really missed radio. And then in Christmas of uh, first year, I heard a friend of mine 
on the air, someone I knew from, from Mount Allison, and she was working at a radio station, CHNS, in, in Halifax, and I sent her a Christmas card. And three days later, I get a call from her, and this is in the old days when your numbers were all listed in the phone book, and she looked it up and gave me a call, and she said, hey, uh, I talked to my station manager about you, and he wants to, to meet you. So I went down, got a job, a great job working at CHNS. So I did that all through law school. And, and so kind of people in Halifax, I think, knew my name anyway, because, you know, not a lot of radio stations there. And I, I was working on one of them. And so just as I was graduating from law school, I sent out, I, I decided at that point, I wouldn't mind seeing if it was possible to work in TV. So I sent a resume to Steve Murphy station. ATV was called back then. Now it's CTV Halifax and to CBC. I forget whether ATV ever called me back or not, but, but CBC said, when you come in and do an audition and, and, and they hired me for a summer job as a reporter, a fill-in reporter, in that uh, after I graduated from from law school, and and I remember a lot from that year. I don't literally remember the first story I did, but I, I do remember being a reporter in uh, in in Halifax and just how how thrilling it was. It, it was very much like the thrill of starting in radio. That you know, TV was so exciting and different and learning how to to use video in a story and 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 putting together these these you know minute and a half two minute news stories i, I love the deadlines i love the uh, pressure of going out and, and doing that and uh yeah and i i was hooked i knew that this is what i wanted to do People know you from CBC News now, and you're transitioning into this new role with three other anchors. Uh, What's the biggest challenge for you? You know, there's nothing that I would call the biggest challenge. I think that, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've been a reporter, and I've been a show host, and uh, and and so it'll be more of that, you know. It, uh, it'll be interesting, because we don't fully understand what it's going to look like, This, you know, with the four of us working together and, and doing a newscast that's a lot different than, than the newscast we've done before. But but really, I mean, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been in this business for a long time, and uh, I, I know about the challenges of it uh, of I talked about deadlines earlier of another one is deal you deal with a lot of people you're always in television it's a good thing but it's also can be a challenging thing that you're always part of a, a team so there are lots of personalities to deal with I'll tell you the big thing for me is I'm just waiting for uh, the, the stories I think that once we are on the air and uh, and we we have the stories that we're covering and we actually have to jump in there and do that I think that it will become very very uh, clear you know it's I'm a big hockey fan and and you think of hockey players they they, they train they they make sure they're as, as fit as they can be they may work on areas of their game that uh, they feel need work like their shot or skating or whatever but at the end of the day you know they, they're waiting to get into that game and they're waiting to react to situation and play the way that they know how to play and that's kind of how i feel I'm, I'm ready to go i'll be up front when they came out and said that you know they were pl- replacing peter mansbridge i thought okay, they'll probably give it to Wendy Mesley or they're going to replace it with one or two other hosts. Now, in my uh, assumption, I thought, okay, they'll give it to Ian Hannah Manzing because, you know, that's who we see before we see Peter. They went with four rather than just one or two. Why do you think they did that? Well, I, I know why they did it. I mean, you know, they did it because they 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 want there are a lot of things about this new show that are going to be different from the old show, right? And the the old model is one person, as you say, maybe two, and every time there's a big story, it has to be, you know, that person who who you know, even if they have to get brought in from vacation or move from one place to another quickly. Um, I think they decided here, look, let's, originally it was going to be three people and it was going to be three people in three different cities. And then when they kind of looked at the math, they realized, no, we actually need four. We're covering off Sunday to Friday. Peter worked primarily Monday to Thursday. So you have a couple of extra days there. We have five editions of the program a night starting in the Atlantic time zone at 10 o'clock Atlantic time, uh, 10.30 Newfoundland, uh, right through till 10 o'clock Pacific time. And when you when you do all that, when you figure that out, the six nights a week, the five time zones a night, the promise that at least a portion of the show will be live in every time zone right up until 11 o'clock 
Pacific time, so two o'clock in the morning, Atlantic time, two thirty Newfoundland. When you when you do all that math, and then you also want to have reporters who are able to get out there, and or anchors who are able to go out there and report on stories in the field, it it just doesn't work with one or two people, and you need at least three. And as as I say, it turned out they needed they needed four here, so that's why they decided to go with that model. And then when you have four, you know, it allows you to have a a breadth of interests and talents and and ages, and, you know, some people have said, well, you know, how come we don't have somebody who is, uh, you know, based in the northern part of the country? Or how come, you know, like four people, you, you can't represent every single region or, uh, you know, group in the country. But I think you represent a lot. You know, you look at Rosemary, who grew up in Manitoba, is fluently bilingual, went to university in uh or at least certainly was a reporter for years in Quebec, knows knows politics. I mean, look at that that kind of experience. And then you look at me growing up in New Brunswick, living in Vancouver for all these years with a law degree, with my areas of interest, you know, Adrian, Andrew as well, bring bring their, their very specific uh, and varied interests to the table as well. Uh, that's pretty pretty formidable to have that collection of talents and interests. And already, you know, people have pitched ideas to me for uh, stories and interviews to do. And, and there was one in particular, I, I won't say who it was, but I, I, I said, like, it was one of those interviews that wasn't a must-do interview. And they said, look, we have an opportunity to interview this person. Are you interested? And I said, you know what? Like, I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but frankly, no, uh, not, not that interested. I said, but there are three other hosts, and I'll bet you somebody else would love to do it. And, and in fact, I talked to one of the hosts, and, and they very quickly said, yeah, like that, that would be a great interview subject. So, so you know, I mean, that's just a little example of of how when you have different people there, it, it's going to be a real uh, it's going to be a real advantage for the show to have those four different perspectives, four different uh, areas of interest that overlap. But uh, but you know, th- there are a lot of things that each of us does that's different than the other. So I think that that's going to be really good. I like that answer. That's very solid. I like the the full on explanation. I I like that you kind of covered the fact of you know because that was something that I was going to say is you know you've got locations there and someone's going to be in Vancouver, two in Toronto, one in Ottawa, and some people would be saying, like, how come my region's not being covered? But, you know, in fairness, there's four of you trying to create this national news for all of Canada. We can't send you everywhere, otherwise you'd be tired. With all that in mind, you're moving to Toronto, correct? I am. (laughs) Yeah. How excited are you about that? Because, I mean, you know, people know you in Vancouver, and of course, you got all the credentials, but do you ever worry that you're going to have to try to build like another fan base there in Toronto? Yeah, uh, you know, no. Like a lot of people move. It's just that I not move for a long time. And so I do have really deep ties to Vancouver. And so I've already moved to, to Toronto and, um, and it's tough. Like Toronto's a great city and I, I've spent a lot of time there over the years and I actually lived there for just under a year before I came to Vancouver. Um, so I have no, you know, there, there's a lot about Toronto that's exciting. Uh, it's exciting to be based at the broadcast center in Toronto. Lots of stuff is happening there. I uh, went to visit my parents in New Brunswick on uh, Thanksgiving, and it's an advantage to be in Toronto as opposed to Vancouver. To, it's a lot easier and quicker to get to, to New Brunswick than it was before. And, you know, and you spend, I spent 29 years in Vancouver. It's where my kids were born and, and grew up, and lots of people move. Lots of people move lots of times, and uh, and so, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I need to get over myself and just do this, and, you know, it'll, it'll work out fine, but, uh, but it is it's one of the challenges of the job. I, I, I you know, I, I, I do miss Vancouver. There's no question about that. And lastly, Ian, what are you looking forward to in your new job? Like, what do you think Canadians want to see from the new hosts? I look forward to the opportunity to do to be part of something that if if we do this right, it's going to be a different way of doing the news. It's going to be a a creative, different way of of having a network newscast. And early on, I I asked Jennifer McGuire, who's the head of of news for CBC, I asked her, is is this idea, this concept with multiple anchors uh, and all the other things we talked about, uh, multiple cities uh, live in every time zone to an extent, 
I said, is this based on a model somewhere else? And she said, no. And I remember for, at first thinking, uh, like, oh, okay, so that, that's an interesting challenge. But then I thought to myself, you know what? It's good. It's good that we are doing something creative and different. And if we do it right, uh, I think that it'll show people, not just in Canada, but in other places as well, that here is a, a different way of doing an, a, a national newscast. That really, whether you know wherever you are in the world, the national newscast in a country kind of follows a very similar pattern that we talked about earlier. One, maybe two people, very formal series of stories done by uh, by reporters. Uh, ours is going to be different, more lively, more live, more explanatory, more context, and fewer stories, because right now you can you can get everything you really want uh, a click away on the internet. We can zero in on the on the you know the key stories of the day and uh, and and give our audiences depth and context. You know, we talk a lot about that these days at the CBC. So I get to be part of that, right? I get to be part of the group because when you're an anchor, you, you, you do more than just, or host, I guess, you do more than just talk or read. You get to be part of the leadership team that is uh, developing the show on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I think that there are lots of journalists across this country who want to be part of that process, you know, who want to be involved in, in deciding what's on the front page of the Globe and Mail, who decide what's going to be in CTV's national news. And in our case, to decide not only what's going to be on the national, but what the national itself is going to look like. And so, as I say, if we do this right, uh, and we do a newscast that is different and better than we've uh, than we've done in the past, and look, I've been in, associated with the national for a long time, and we've done a good work for many, many years. So this is not about fixing a problem. This is about making a very good newscast even better. You know, to be part of that, that's what I'm excited about. That's going to do it for this episode of Topin Tonight. Our thanks to Ian Hanomansing for coming on the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TopinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying, thanks for listening, and good night.